to awful living conditions on the plantations. Hundreds of them were killed. Within a short span of time, several Indian families established prosperous rice businesses, and Guyana became the principal exporter of rice in the Caribbean. The colonial government, realizing the export potential of rice, helped to develop this industry. The commercial success of the rice industry helped the emergence of an educated middle class in the Indian community. With the expansion of Indian entrepreneurs to other areas, a strong middle class of Indians emerged who started moving to cities for jobs in the state and private sectors. The Africans had by then adapted to the colonial system and had been educated in the Christian missionary schools. They were the first educated non-whites in the Caribbean society. Although the top positions in the administration were still kept for whites, Africans were slowly beginning to gain positions in almost all spheres of the colonial administration, including the police and security forces. Meanwhile, here's another reminder of what took place this morning at the office of the president, where several security guards were assaulted in the process and extensive damage was done to the office equipment in the accounts department. Just before lunch hour today, a group of protesters stormed the office of the president complex. The presidential guard at the New Garden Street entrance was beaten. And to use Mr. Hart's word, enough is enough. This became the fertile ground for the ethnic and racial conflict between descendants of slavery and indentureship in Guyana and Trinidad. I'm standing in between Buxton and Annadale village. Buxton is predominantly an African village and Annadale an Indian village, an area of potential racial and ethnic conflict. It is anticipated and it is widely rumored that there is going to be major ethnic clash on or before or after August 1st, that's Emancipation Day. I'm your fight for justice. 